What inspired us when we developed UN17 Village was we wanted to create a methodology where we could make sure we had a holistic perspective on how we develop and operate the building. In order to do that, we needed to set some goals, we needed to have some high ambitions, and we came up with the idea on implementing uh, all the 17 SDGs. One of the problems we wanted to address is the health of our tenants. Not only the physical health, but also the mental health. We wanted to create a project that actually enabled people to live a happier and less lonely life. I think the key to build trust and, and to build a community is also to understand that you need to have somebody out here and the right person to enable that and to put people together. And then after a while, it will start to grow naturally. But I do believe that it's key to have the right person, and we do in fact have that here. My name is Anne-Sophie Hansen, and I work as a community manager for the UN17 Village. Loneliness is a big issue, especially in bigger cities, which I have a big focus on in this project, uh, with bringing uh, the people, the tenants, uh, together. In the common areas, we have a lot of communal dinners. We have uh, book clubs. Uh, we've had several like game tournaments, potlucks, so all kinds of things. And of course, we're, right now we're in the beginning, but uh, I can only imagine that it's gonna take root as we go. And in a few years, we'll see even more events happening. I think it's very important if you want to build a community that you don't just establish the common spaces, um, but you also have some sort of effort in, in building it up. Because here we have a lot of people that don't know each other, and it can be very frightening to uh, initiate the first meetings. Uh, so if someone else does it and someone else invites you in and you feel like it's easy to tap into, then it's probably a little bit easier to meet people outside of your own apartment. I think like one of the best parts of joining the community here has been the potential that it holds through some of the organization that folk like Anna Sophie have brought to the table in organizing say the first aid activities that we've had or the Christmas party and the tree that everybody got together for. Those kind of things have been great. As somebody who likes to organize events, having the capacity to just have a space right around here where I can do that, where we can look at it on the field. Uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. There's a lot of potential, which I didn't feel like I had when I was living in some of the more traditional buildings and, and spaces that exist elsewhere in Copenhagen. The way we measure success is of course, if we have people that are happier when they live here than before they lived here. For me, the best part is that they have actually gained a lot of friends out here. Um, they feel they feel that um, their life has been better. It's definitely possible to create projects similar to this one. It's just very important to be aware of uh, the specific community or the specific types of people that you uh, that you are building the community for. Let the let the residents be part of. Uh, creating and and shaping uh, the community because not there aren't two communities that are the same. I think a lot of cities can can learn from this and they can use the same methodology. It's not only the building but it's also the people that lives in it that should be taking into account every time you make it even a small decision.